Hey, hello. I am surprisingly here today because I wanted to do a short video review of this perfume, Tangy Eau de Toilette. This is a 1920s era perfume that is still in production today. You can still buy this new. And the reason I wanted to make a video is because when I was learning about this, well, I was trying to learn about it, and there is weirdly almost no information about this just anywhere on the whole World Wide Web. So I was able to find one video on YouTube, so I figured if I make one, then there'll be two. And if anybody else needs to know about Tangi, they can have options. So I heard about this a couple months ago. I got this catalog in the mail from the Vermont Country Store. I have no idea why it came, but it showed up one day and it's continued to come. I guess I'm now a subscriber to this catalog. Although, I mean, to be fair, I did buy something from them. so. It makes sense. They Their marketing worked and yeah. Anyway, the Vermont Country Store is, it's kind of a mom and pop operation, family run business. It's been around since the 1940s, presumably located in Vermont. And their whole deal is they sell old timey goods for old people, or as they say, they're the purveyors of the practical and hard to find. Basically, anything they don't make like they used to and you can't find in a store, that's that's their whole deal. So things like mm, medicated foot creams and orthopedic slippers and ugly nightgowns and old-fashioned candy and shampoo from the 1970s and relevant to us, cosmetics and fragrances. So this isn't the, the one that I got originally. This is the, the Christmas edition, so not exactly what I was looking at before. It's got a lot more like plaid flannel and fruitcakes and stuff, but you can kind of get the idea. There's, you know, 1950s era Christmas light thingies. And if you've ever wondered where you get ribbon candy here, you get old sort of Raggedy Ann and Andy toys and Nancy Drew mysteries and all that kind of thing. Ugly nightgowns, ugly nightgowns, and here we go. So the one that I was looking at, it actually had a, a multi-page spread dedicated just to fragrances that had all kinds of stuff like Lawn Man Arpege and White Shoulders and Halston, you know, that kind of thing. And then it had like a whole half page dedicated just to Tangy Perfume. Here it's it's with some of the makeup. And it actually, I had heard of Tangy, the cosmetics company before. I think they're still relatively well known for this lipstick, this tangerine colored lipstick here. And this is one of those color changing lipsticks that's supposed to automatically turn into the perfect shade to complement your complexion based on your body's unique pH or whatever. In my experience, it always ends up being kind of like a weird bluey pink color that makes my teeth look yellow, but I always kind of hope that maybe, you know, I'll get one of them one day and it'll enhance my one of a kind beauty perfectly. Who knows? In this case, I just was going for the perfume this time. So that ad also included the box in the photo. So obviously very eye-catching design here. This black with the gold embossing and this stark red flower detail there. It's very art deco-y fonts and everything. So it's a really good looking box, draws the eye in. And then it was tangerine and jasmine. And I thought, I like tangerine and I like jasmine. So that sounds good. And it's $30 for 50 mil. So it's kind of like right in that range where you can just go ahead and blind buy it without thinking about it. But even still, I was trying to find out a little bit more before I decided to buy it. And there's just not a lot to work with. So you can see here, it's probably pretty similar to the blurb that was in the, the bigger spread. It's just a couple sentences here. So we've got Tangi Eau de Toilette, her new signature scent. And says, treat her to this refreshing citrus. Oh, so treat her. This is directed to the men out there. You should buy this for your lady. To this refreshing citrus and floral blend of tangerine and jasmine. So that's that's a little bit of information. I tried looking this up on Fragrantica. It does not exist on Fragrantica, which at that point, does it even exist at all? I looked on YouTube and I did find the one video by this lovely woman named Ruth Ann McKinnon. She gives a very good, succinct five minute review. I could never um, 
I will link that down below so you can take a look. And then it had like a brief mention in another video that was kind of an overview of the history of the Tangier Cosmetics Company, which is actually pretty interesting if you want to watch that also, you know, hear about a 1920s makeup company. Yeah, but then Googling, it was like, it was almost shocking how little information there was out there. Like you would think in 2023, like, is there anything under the sun that doesn't have some some information somewhere, whether it's like a Wikipedia blurb or, or a Facebook post, or I don't know, some 15 year live journal from a hobbyist who specializes in American perfumes from the 20, early 20th century, but, but nothing, there's nothing like no information about the notes, no reviews. Um, I did go to their website and they had customer reviews there. It, it showed that there were, you know, a star rating and customer reviews, but there weren't any appearing on the page. And it turns out that's because I was looking on my phone and their reviews widget isn't compatible, I guess, with Safari on mobile. So it looked like there were no reviews and just, I couldn't get any answers. And I was like, why? Like, why? I need to know. I need to know more than this. So I figured at that point, I, this was bothering me. It had wormed its way into my head and I just needed to see it to its resolution. And, you know, $30, I would get $30 worth of entertainment out of the process, if nothing else. So I did go ahead and buy it, obviously. That's why we're here. I think what I had been hoping would happen is that, you know, I would be kind of like an explorer in this uncharted land or, or an archaeologist uncovering this long forgotten treasure. And I could share with the world my findings and tell you, my tens of subscribers, about this amazing new discovery, this hidden gem. And I was hoping that it would be a hidden gem and then I could be the one who told you and I would be wearing it and people would be asking me, oh, what are you wearing? And I have to tell them, oh, you've probably never heard of it. It's very obscure. And that would make me seem interesting and mysterious and cool. So, I mean, that's, that's what I was hoping would happen. The reality, as is so often the case, ended up being less exciting, but... Let's see. Right, so we've got a little bit more information here on the back of the bottle to, or the back of the box too. So tangerine, tangerine and jasmine, eau de toilette says the light citrus notes of tangerine are forever joined with jasmine's floral bouquet and this beautifully matched fresh scent. And then it also gives you directions for how to smell beautiful. So that's useful. And um, you can see it's made exclusively in the USA for the Vermont Country Store. So yeah, still tangerine and jasmine, not much more than that. Uh, Ruth Ann's review does talk about, uh, she calls it a, a winter citrus. So not, not a summer refreshing hot weather thing, but something that's warmer that you would cuddle up with in a sweater and something a little bit creamy with a little bit of vanilla in the base, I think she said even. So that, that sounded good to me. Um, I was eventually able to see the reviews on a different browser, the customer reviews. Unsurprisingly, they, they were not super helpful. Helpful, although there was one that did mention, they called it a, a creamsicle, and I found that compelling, which is kind of funny because I don't actually like creamsicles to eat, but for some reason, anytime someone says a perfume smells like a creamsicle, my ears just perk up and I'm like, oh, I want to try that. And so I was expecting, you know, tangerine and jasmine in equal measure, equally paired throughout the life of the perfume with citrus floral and maybe with some vanilla, something creamy, maybe. And that ended up, mm, let's mind ourselves. Yeah, so for me, you definitely do get tangerine right at the opening. It's not like the, the most delectable, vivid, vibrant tangerine ever, but it's it's recognizably citrus and orange citrus fruit. It's there. But I found the citrus faded really quickly. I mean, even more quickly than you would expect it to. I think, um, you know, just within minutes, you're left with kind of just a kind of a flat floral jasmine and not the kind of jasmine that that I typically tend to like. I think when I want jasmine, I want something that's kind of like the deep honeyed intoxicating jasmine or like the very kind of distinctly petal blossomy sort of jasmine. 
And this one is really neither of those. It's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of monotone. It's a little high pitched and thready sometimes. It's kind of prim. It's pretty. It's there's something bad about it. It's just a little, mm, you know, maybe the jasmine is slightly more in the realm of jasmine tea. And then I think it it does start to get a little, maybe a little bit powdery, maybe a little bit musky at some point. I'm actually really terrible at pulling out notes if I don't have like a note pyramid to go by. I, I need someone to tell my brain what to think, I guess. And, uh, you know, here all I have is tangerine and jasmine, so I can't make a pyramid out of that. That's that's a line. That's not a pyramid. But yeah, the, it's a floral, a very linear floral. It's maybe approaching the territory of mm, like maybe more potpourri or, or one of those sachets that you would find in the back of a, a drawer at your grandmother's house. And I'm saying that as someone who didn't grow up with a grandmother, my, my mom's parents both live in Korea. And so I've only met them a couple times in my life. And then my dad... My dad's parents died when I was a baby, but I do have an uncle, an elderly uncle who's now in his 90s, and he, he's still living in the house where the family was since the, the 1940s. Um, so he essentially lives in a grandmother's house. It just doesn't happen to have an actual grandmother in it, but it's got all the hallmarks, I think, that you would expect, you know, furniture from the 50s and the 60s and crocheted doilies all over the place and a musty basement and ancient tubs of Vaseline with rusted metal lids and so I think I've got some kind of context for grandmother's house at least what I I associate with a grandmother's house and that's that's a little bit of a vibe that this gives me I, you know I never like when people say oh it smells like an old lady when they don't like a perfume because I just feel like that's kind of a lazy way to write off a perfume but it's also not always entirely in inaccurate. And in this case, yeah, there is something about this that is kind of pulling grandmother's house to me. Uh, but maybe not to you. Maybe your grandmother's house smelled very different. Yeah, I don't know if I, I mean, I wasn't expecting this to be like a 1920s version of Alien, although it would have been really cool if it were a 1920s version of Alien. And I also don't know what I even mean by that, like what my expectations are for a, a vintage smelling perfume or a 1920s smelling perfume. Like what even was perfume in the 1920s? Shalimar, Shalimar and Chanel number no. 5, those were both out in the 1920s and Leur Bleu and, but those are obviously, I mean, those are iconic perfumes that have stood the test of time for, and are still around for a reason versus Tangi Eau de Toilette, which is still around because it's made exclusively for the Vermont Country Store. So yeah, I wouldn't say there's anything distinctly vintage smelling to my nose either. It's just kind of a basic floral, certainly not as interesting as, well, obviously not as interesting as Shalomar or Chanel number no. five, but so basically this is a floral perfume that has some citrus at the top. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's just not for me. It's just not something that I, I would like. So I guess the question is, should you buy Tangi Eau de Toilette? If you're like me, the answer is no, because you don't want to wear this. Don't buy it. You don't want it. But if you are somebody who is in the market for a kind of straightforward floral and you like jasmine and you like a, a, a hint of citrus and you're attracted to this vintage aesthetic, your budget is $30, then this might be just what the doctor ordered for you. And I would encourage you to go to the Vermont Country Store and check this out. Also watch Ruth's review. She, she does a good job of describing her experience with it. And maybe that ends up being much more aligned with you than, than what I'm saying. So, and if you don't like it, you can return it to the store. They will take it back because, you know, they want to ensure their customer satisfaction. I did not return it just kind of on principle. I don't like the idea of returning something like a perfume just because I end up not liking it because I feel like, you know, I'm a grown up and I understand that if I'm purchasing something and I, I don't know whether I'm going to like it or not, that's kind of my fault, not the store's fault. And even at like a giant multinational corporation like Sephora or Ulta, I still kind of feel a little bit that way. And then also those stores 
they're legally required to destroy all return merchandise for, for sanitary reasons. And that just, I find that kind of waste, like really, really distasteful. Um, so, but you could return this if you don't like it. And actually, if you live in the United States and you think you want to try Tangi Eau de Toilette, let me know. I could, I could send this to you and then you could have it. And then you could make a video and there would be three videos about Tangi. So let me know. But yeah, basically not a successful blind buy for me. But it also, I mean, it wasn't a total loss because it did get me back into sampling some interesting things and reading more about perfume again for the first time in a long time, watching some videos and making this video at least. So that's a positive thing. Uh, I also just really enjoyed looking through the old perfume descriptions. They're just, they're just kind of fun. Like, you know, this one, exciting things happen when it's evening in Paris and there's, you know, there's no house listed here. I have no idea what this is. It's just, it's got like kind of a fun silver label with another, another nice vintagey font and this cobalt blue color and kind of a euphoria-esque silhouette. Tigress, this is one that I thought actually sounded kind of cool. I was a little bit interested in. There's one, there's, there is a Tigress in Fragrantica and I don't know if it's the same thing because that, if I'm remembering correctly, it was kind of like a, a 1970s era perfume and I don't know if that's the same. But yeah, like Tigress, registered trademark, are you wild enough to wear the seductive cologne? I mean, me probably not, but, but maybe, like maybe I am and maybe I would find out for $40, I could be a tigress. It's, it's a nice bottle. Like I, I like this, the look of this. It's got this kind of intentionally thick glass base with this little detail in the middle there. And like the, the, the proportions of the lid and the bottle are really pleasing to me. You know, the nice font on the label. And look here, this is the, the male version of this. It's got the same bottle design with that little whoop in the middle there. I just got a, a manlier name, Woodhue. That's like, that's like a lumberjack. That's very masculine and uh, manlier fonts. And I'm realizing it doesn't say anything about men here. So this is just me projecting my gender norms on this perfume for no reason. But yeah, I mean, would you, would you, Eau de Cologne, the subtle yet sophisticated scent everyone can wear and it's found only here. And by the way, the, the review of Tangi is, is over now. So if that's why you're here, this is not, I mean, I'm just rambling now, um, but when song, like you choose the, you can choose the Eau de Cologne or the, the talc free powder and it comes with this white fluffy powder puff. Like that's fun. And yeah, Royal Secret makes a lasting impression day or night. It's got an indulgent and quote unquote, sweetly persistent blend of rose, black currant, mandarin, bergamot, jasmine, soft musk. That sounds good. It's a classic sheep or floral fragrance, lush and thoroughly feminine. For $18 at that price, how could you afford not to buy it, really? And it comes with a tassel on the bottle, so all good stuff. And actually, I have kind of a, a running list of vintage perfumes that I've been meaning to try for a long time, but have never gotten around to, like Dana Taboo. That is one that I think sounds like it could be good. I don't know why. I... I like the idea of liking a vintage perfume, even though I think in reality, I probably wouldn't like a lot of them, but, but maybe some like Dana Tabu, I could see myself liking that. Uh, Lulu by Cacharel. I feel like I wouldn't like that at all, but I do like the, the turquoise and red bottle, the, the genie shaped one and the other like plain shaped one. Um, Reeve Gauche is another one where I'm really attracted to the look of the bottle, but probably would hate wearing it. Estee Lauder Youth Do. That's one I think I've actually sprayed at a perfume counter before. And I think, I think legitimately kind of liked it. If I remember correctly, it's like an intensely sort of oily, unctuous cinnamon stick sort of thing. And it has also, again, a very nice bottle shape that I, I like the look of a lot. So if you have any vintage perfumes that you love or that you would recommend and you think I should try, definitely let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts there. I think that's it. I, that's the review of Tangi and a little bit of extra stuff. And yeah, I'm going to say that's the end of the video. We're going to call that the end. And uh, thank you for watching.
maybe we'll see you again some other time, but you know, no promises.